Welcome to Chubby Meeple Plays Wingspan. Today we're going to play a solo playthrough of Wingspan from Stonemeyer Games designer Elizabeth Hargrave. Uh, absolutely beautiful uh, production value. Um, we're going to see how this goes as a solo playthrough, and uh, hopefully I don't mess up too much on camera. I probably will, but we'll see how it goes. So we've got everything set up here. Um, we've got the uh, Automa deck set. I've got my three face-up bird cards ready to go. Off camera, I have the uh, bird cards that we'll draw from when we're refilling, uh, as well as the bonus cards in case we end up drawing some more. Got my food and my eggs here. Uh, I have not yet rolled the dice in the dice tower, uh, this bird feeder. Um, we've got the goals set up for the four rounds. I have uh, not selected my goal. We have the goal for the Automa selected, and then I've got five cards, but I have not gone through them or even looked at them at this point to see what I want to keep uh, for my starting hand. Um, for the Automa, the Automa is the backyard birder, so they're looking for birds with uh, less than four points, uh, which is 42% of the cards. Uh, now the Automa doesn't actually score from the bonus card, but this helps determine what cards they're going to take uh, when certain actions come up. Uh, the two choices that I have, I have an omnivore expert. So this is birds that will eat anything. So two points per bird that has, that specifically has a wild symbol as part of its food cost. Unfortunately, it's only 10% of the card, so I may not want to go that route. Uh, or I could do a prairie manager, birds that can only live in the grasslands areas. Uh, if I get two to three birds that can only live in grasslands, it's worth three points. Four or more birds is worth eight points, and there's 19% of those. Um, I actually think I'm going to take the prairie manager card, and I'm going to set this off camera so that we can refer to it. The omnivore expert, I'm just going to return to the bottom of the bonus card deck so I don't accidentally end up drawing that uh, if I end up drawing more bonus cards. All right, so let's see what I have for birds that are here. Um, so I've got in my hand, I have actually three birds here that can live only in the wetlands. So I could keep all of these. I could keep all three, the, the bronzed cowbird, the Cass and Sparrow, and the greater prairie chicken. I could keep these and discard these two cards uh, simply because they don't apply to my end game goal. But I also want to be keeping an eye out for... Uh, the round goals. At the end of round one, we're looking at bird cards with the platform nests that have eggs on them. So while these three birds can live exclusively in the grasslands, they don't have platform nests, so they really don't help me for uh, the round one goal. However, the round two goal is looking for the number of eggs in ground nests, so they could help me there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep all three of these grassland cards. I'm going to return these two to the discard pile. Uh, and then that means I have to pay three food in order to keep these cards. Well, I definitely am, I get to keep two, so I definitely want to keep my invertebrate and my seed. So we're going to return the fish, the rodent, and the fruit back to the supply. And we are set up and ready to go. Um, I need to roll the food dice because I have not done that quite yet. So we'll pop this into the back of the bird feeder here. And that will be the starting food. I always take the first turn uh, according to the rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come here for my first action and I'm going to play a bird. And I'm going to play, I'm going to pay my grub and my seed, or my invertebrate and my seed. I want to play Cast and Sparrow here to the grassland. So that bird card has been played. That is my turn. We move to the Automa. So we flip up the top card of the deck. And in round one, they're going to take food from the bird feeder. And it looks like they're going to take rats first. Now, when they take food, they take all of the food of that type. So we're simply going to remove this rodent die out of the bird feeder. They don't actually take food from the, from the feeder, or actually, actually don't take food tokens. But they do remove dice, making it a little harder on me. And then this card that we turned up will actually be removed at the end of the first round. Uh, so now we're back over to me. I forgot to move my cube over here. Um, and the first thing I need to do now is I need to get some food because I don't have any food left to play additional bird cards. So we're going to get food. I'm going to take a, let's take this die and we'll take a seed for that. Add that to my supply and that will be my turn. 
what is the automa going to do? They are going to draw a bird cards. So we look at the face up cards that are up here. They will take all cards that match their goal. So uh, matching their goal birds with uh, worth less than four points. So anything that matches that they are going to take. These cards are going to get placed face up. Uh, they're going to take the, the ones, they take all of the cards that match it. They then place the uh, the card with the higher scoring value goes into their scoring. The other one simply gets discarded. So this red-eyed Vireo for three points is going to go face up in their scoring pile. The other card will just get discarded. And now uh, there's a couple holes there, um, which will get refilled at the end of their turn. So that's that is as of now. So we'll refill this. We have a, a white crown sparrow and a red cross bill, both with brown powers on them. All right, I think what I need to do again is I need to take, draw more food. Um, although I need invertebrates and there are none in the feeder. All I have are fish and fruit. I think I will, however, go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and take fruit. I'm going to take the fruit out of here. Because in the next time that I the next time that I take food, because these are matching symbols in the bird feeder, I can re-roll them, uh, which will let me hopefully get what I actually need. So we're going to move over here to the Altoma. Altoma is going to take food, uh, and the only thing to take is fish. So they're going to take all of the fish out of here, which means if I choose to take food, I get to re-roll at that point. Now one of the things I need to check is, um, yeah, at the start of the first round, I should have added a cube for their first action. They add action cubes to the goals. Uh, so they have a base value uh, for round one. We're looking at a certain type of nest cards. They start with a base of zero. So right now uh, they are not winning, or they are currently winning round one because they have one of their action cubes placed. There's not a second action on this card. And in this one, they take food out of the feeder and activate all pink powers, but I don't have any pink powers out. So nothing will activate there. So we're gonna move back to my turn. I am absolutely going to take food again. And before I get to take a food die though, I get to re-roll all of the dice into the bird feeder. Let's drop that one in again. And I have what I need at least. Uh, I'm going to take this die. This die lets me take uh, one seed or one invertebrate. I'm gonna take an invertebrate, add that to my food supply, and then we will let the automa go. The Altoma is going to gain an egg. Eggs at the end of the game for the Altoma are simply points. So we'll place that in its supply area. No other action gets added. Um, this seems really redundant, but I'm going to take food again. Um, because while I could play, while I could play the bronzed cowbird uh, on here, what I want to do is I actually want to play my greater prairie chicken for, the, for its win played ability. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to take food. I'm going to pull this and I need a second seed in order to play this chicken. So we'll do that. That will be my turn. The Automa is going to take the draw cards action. When they take the draw cards action, they simply discard all of the cards here. They draw a card off the deck face down. Face down cards for the Automa are worth four points at the end of the game because I'm playing on normal difficulty. So they will. Uh, so that card's worth four points there, and then we will refill uh, at the end of their turn. We also get they also get an action cube placed on the goal again. So we have Clark's Grebe. We have a Cedar Waxwing and ash-throated flycatcher, which is a bird that lives exclusively in grasslands, which I might want for, uh, for my goal. Uh, if I can get four or more birds that live exclusively in grasslands, it's worth eight points at the end of the game for me, so that might be really good for me to have. Um, I am going to, um, let's see here. I actually can't play a bird here in the grassland right now because I need eggs out in order to do that, because my next bird that I play if I play in the grasslands, we'll have to go here, which costs me an egg, and I don't have any eggs. So I think what I need to do first is I'm going to take the lay eggs action, and which lets me place two eggs. I'm going to put both of those eggs on Cass and Sparrow. As I move my cube this way, 
Uh, it says when activated, I can lay an egg on any bird. Well, this bird can only hold two eggs and it has two on it. So I'm not gonna get to take that action, unfortunately, but I have eggs available to be able to place my second bird on my next turn. We're gonna move to uh, the Altoma's turn. They're going to do the draw birds card action again. So we're going to clear uh, clear this out. They're gonna draw a bird card face down and add it to their scoring pile. They're also going to remove a cube from the uh, goal tracker. And then we refill. We have the Savannah Sparrow, the American Robin, and we have the Northern Flicker. Now I'm sad because I wanted the Ash-Throated Flycatcher that could live in grasslands. However, the Savannah Sparrow also can only live in grasslands. So this bird will actually work for me and it only takes an invertebrate or a seed uh, in order to uh, play that card. So um, that might be a good card for me to have. However, I'm not gonna take it. I'm gonna run the risk that it will still be there. I'm gonna take my play bird action. I have to pay an egg and I have to pay uh, a, an invertebrate and two seed. I'm gonna pop these back into the supply and I'm gonna play the Greater Prairie Chicken. Now the Greater Prairie Chicken has an activation that says when played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. So this is a great way to earn some additional in-game scoring. Uh, it's great in games, multiplayer games, but especially in the solo game because you want as many in-game points as you can. So I get to draw two of these. My options are the cartographer, which are birds with geography terms in their names. So things like American, Baltimore, Chihuahua, uh, Eastern, those types of things. Uh, four birds, four or more birds would be seven points. Two to three birds is three points. Um, right now, I don't have any of those that are out. There is, however, the Savannah Sparrow up here has a geological term or a geography term. So maybe I will take that. The other one I have is the forester. And this is birds that can only live in the forest, which is up here, which is where I'm really not focusing a whole lot at this point. Three to four birds is worth four points, five birds worth eight points. So if I fill up this row, I'll get eight points. I actually think I'm gonna take the cartographer bonus and set it aside and we'll discard the forester. I think the cartographer is gonna be a little easier because some of these birds that live in the grasslands have things like savanna. There's a northern flicker up there that I could play. Uh, up there as well. American Robin. All three of the birds that are face up actually fit that cartographer. Um, so that, move this cube over, that's going to be my turn. The Altoma is going to take their turn and they are going to take food from the uh, from the food, from the, the bird feeder. Starting with rodents, there are no rodents, they're going to take both of the fish die out and activate all pink powers. I don't have any pink powers out on the table. So it becomes my turn. I got my last action for the round. Uh, and I am going to, I believe what I'll probably do is just to set myself up for the next turn uh, is I'm actually going to take the lay eggs action again. I'm going to lay three eggs. Now when I, when I put eggs on bird cards, I can put those eggs anywhere. Um, so I'm going to take three eggs. I'm going to put one on the cast and sparrow. I'm going to put two on the greater prairie chicken. Then my cube moves to the left. When I hit the prairie chicken, nothing happens because he had a when played ability. However, when I hit the cast and sparrow, it has an ability that lets me lay an egg on any bird card when it activated. So I'm going to lay another egg on the greater prairie chicken. That will conclude my turn. The Altoma gets to take one final turn to finish out the round. And they are going to just gain an egg and remove... Uh, an act, or remove a cube, which is actually really good for me uh, on here. So we're at the end of the round. First thing we need to do is we need to look at end of round goals. So we're looking at, for round one, we're looking at the goal of these platform nests. So how many cards have platform nests uh, and eggs on them? For me, I have uh, two ground nests on my two birds. They have eggs on them, but they're ground nests. They're not platform nests. So I have zero of those. The Altoma also has zero because according to the round one scoring card, we look at that particular type, they start with a base of zero and you add any action cubes that they had. They would have had one until that last card came out. So what's going to happen is neither of us have anything. So we're simply going to each take one of our action cubes and place it on the zero space. So no one's going to score any points for round one's goal. I will then clear off my board here. We're going to go through the Altoma deck. I know we're gonna remove this card that says to remove after round one, just pop it back in the box. We're going to flip the round indicator around just to remind us that we are on round two. We're gonna shuffle these up, give the Altoma deck a good shuffle here. And unfortunately for me, between rounds, the um, face up birds 
get wiped and restocked between rounds. So unfortunately that Savannah Sparrow is going to go away uh, for me. So we need to wipe these out and refill with three more birds. Hopefully I get some more birds that are uh, either have the geography terms or can live exclusively in the grasslands. And uh, I don't have any. So I've got two birds that live exclusively in the forest, one bird exclusively in the wetlands. Uh, however, this trumpeter swan might be nice because it will help with my drawing bird cards action. Plus it's a nine point bird, so we might go that, that route as well. Uh, we're now ready to proceed. Uh, I need to flip this round card over to round two. We're looking at the number of eggs in ground nests. So for round two, I'm actually doing very well. I'm sitting at five. Uh, the automa starts at three. Uh, in round two, they start with a base of three for this particular goal. So right now I'm winning five to three, which is good because if I get first place and beat the Automa, it'll be worth five points at the end of the game. All right. So it is my turn. I have the bronzed cowbird still in my hand. Uh, I would be able to play this, but I don't have the food for it. I think what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to take the gain food action. And because all of the die are the same face, I can re-roll the food die before I choose one. All right, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to take this die out and I'm gonna take an invertebrate for that. All right, and that's gonna be my turn. What is the automa doing here? We flip the card over, they're taking the draw birds, which actually is good for me because I didn't want any of these face up birds anyway. Maybe they'll give me something else. We add another face down bird card to their scoring pile. We have an Eastern Phoebe, Stellar's J that lives exclusively in the forest, and a Mountain Chickadee. So we have uh, the words Mountain and Eastern count for my cartographer, so those might be nice birds to add if I choose to go that route. I think what I need to do is I need to take more food because I want to be able to play this particular card. So we're going to take the food. I'm going to take this die out and I'm going to take the seed this time. I'm going to take a seed rather than an invertebrate. That will be my turn. We move to the Automa's turn. The Automa is going to uh, take food starting with the, uh, the die that I removed earlier with the invertebrate or seed. Then they take invertebrates, then seed. Finally, we get to the rodent. So the rodent is going to come out. They're also going to activate all pink powers. I don't have any pink powers on my board just yet, so that's not going to apply. Now I'm going to play a bird. I'm going to come here. I'm going to spend an egg, which actually hurts toward the goal because I need eggs. Uh, but I'm going to play my bronzed cowbird down, paying an invertebrate and a seed back to the supply. This is a five point bird uh, and now once between turns whenever that whenever that activate pink powers comes up I'll be able to uh, lay an egg on a bird with a bowl nest uh, which right now I don't have any of. So that will be my turn. We move to the Automa. Automa is going to draw bird cards. They're looking for cards that are worth less than four points. There are two of those. Of course they are the two cards that have the geography terms in their names. They're going to keep the Eastern Phoebe because it's worth more. The mountain chickadee gets discarded. And then we fill in. We have a kill deer worth one point and a purple martin worth two. Um, that's important to point out during that action, if none of the face up cards had been worth less than four points, they simply would have drawn a card. Uh, the Altoma would simply draw a card from the deck uh, and, and play it face down for their four points. <clears throat> so it is now my turn. I have no cards in my hands. I should probably take the draw cards action and try to find a card that's gonna help. Uh, I think what I want is, uh, as much as I'm really focusing on these wet, these grassland birds, I really only need to get a fourth one in here to max out my score for my prairie manager, because once I get four or more birds there, it's worth eight points. So once I get a fourth bird here, I don't have to focus so much. So I really need to start focusing more on the forests and the wetlands, <clears throat> making those, those actions stronger, as well as giving me more birds to play on and hopefully focusing on some of the other options. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the draw bird card action and I'm going to uh, use that to take the Stellar's J. Uh, the Stellar's J, what's nice about this, it does two things for me. 
First of all, the round three goal is the number of birds that are in the forests. So how many birds I have played up here will happen in round three. Obviously we're in round two, but it's always good to plan for the future goals. This is also one of those bowl type nests, which means when this pink power gets activated, I'll be able to lay an egg on my Stellar's J. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up and add that to my hand. And then we will simply refill. We've got Wilson's Snipe, which is a wetlands bird, only has an invertebrate cost. Now the bad thing about Stellar's J is he's kind of expensive to play. Uh, he's, th this little guy is uh, two seeds and then any other food. It is also important to note that when spending food, I could, I could take two of any type of food and turn them in for one essentially wild. So I could take a berry and a rodent, and turn it into a fish if I needed it. So that's my turn. The Automa goes. Uh, the Automa is going to take die, starting with berries. So the berry is going to come out. And then they're going to activate all pink powers. So that would activate my bronzed cowbird which lets me uh, lay an egg on a bird with a bull nest. Unfortunately, I don't have a bird with a bull nest, so that's not going to do anything for me right now anyway. We are going to take the food action again. Again, because all the die are the same face, i.e. there's only one die there. I get to re-roll all of these die before I take my food. So we're going to pop these in here. And that's great for me. I'm going to take a seed out of here, <clears throat> add that to my supply. I have two actions left this round. I forgot to move this cube back. The Automa is going to take their turn. Automa for round two is going to gain two eggs and they're going to remove an action cube from one of their action cubes from the goal. They don't have any on the goal. So right now I'm still winning four eggs to three eggs. So I've still got first place for the round two goal, which is very good. My action, I'm going to come in and I'm going to take the food action again because I need to grab this other seed out of here. Add that to my supply, that will be my turn. Then we have the Automa who is going to wipe out the birds up here. They're going to draw a face down card and add to their scoring pile. Uh, they're going to also going to add one of their action cubes to the round two goal. And then we're going to refill. So we have the hooded warbler, the pied billied grebe, and a grasshopper sparrow, which is a nice card for me because this is a card that can only live in the grasslands. That could be my last card that I put out here. Uh, or at least the last one that I need to fill out my goal. For my next turn, my question becomes, um, I have four eggs to right now, uh, four eggs. So we're currently tied. And so what needs to happen, I need to get more eggs out here. If I come here to play another bird, um, it's going to cost me two more eggs, so I don't necessarily want to do that. However, I can play the Stellar's J because it doesn't cost me any anything. So we're going to pay this down. We're going to pay the two seed and one fruit. We're going to pop the, stair the Stellar's J down there. And now when activated, I gain one seed from the bird feeder if available, and I can cash it on this card. Cached food is awesome because it's, it's extra end game points. So that will be my last turn for the round. The Automa will take their last turn. They're going to draw bird cards. So any cards that are worth less than four points, that is these two cards. The Grasshopper Sparrow is going to go face up in their scoring. The Grebe gets discarded. We simply refill. They are also, unfortunately for me, are adding an action cube to the uh, goal, which is gonna take them to five eggs where I only have four. So now we check the end of the round. We have, uh, I have four eggs to their five, so they're actually going to take their cube and place it in first place. I take one of my cubes and place it in second place, which is not good. The Automa just scored five points at the end of the game and I only got two. We then clear the rest of these cubes off. So they have access to that. We clear this. We wipe this out. We refill with three bird cards from the deck. We have a Northern Shoveler which is good for my cartographer. We've got a spotted sandpiper and we have a willet. So three wetlands birds, which could be good for me because I don't have any in the wetlands yet. We then take the Automa cards. We're gonna flip our round marker over to remind us that we're in round three. 
we are going to uh, pull the, there's the card that says remove after round two, pop that back in the box. I realized I had one of the Automa reference cards in, so I'm going to pop that back up under here. Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't need to have that shuffled in the deck. It's kind of funny it was in there and never came out when we were drawing. Would have been a big deal. I simply would have just drawn another card for them. So we're into round three now. Round three, we are looking for bird cards in the forest. So I need to flip this round marker here to round three. Um, we are looking for total bird cards. Uh, or no, that's total bird cards. So birds in forests, they are going to start with a base of two. So already the Automa is beating me in the number of cards in the forest because they are starting with two. I only have one in the forest. So I need to work on that and hope that they don't add anything else. What's interesting about this is they start with a base of two, which means they can never go lower than two cards. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to find a way to play two more uh, forest birds this round in order to win, you know, at the very least, two more bird cards uh, into the forest in order to take six points at the end of the game. All right, so we are ready to go. It is my turn. I have no cards in hand. So I think what I need to do is I need to draw some cards. And unfortunately, none of these cards up here are forest cards. So if I take the draw cards action, I'll likely just draw from the deck and hope to pull something that can go in the forest. So I'm just going to take my draw bird card action. You know what? I'm going to take, I'm, I'm actually going to, yeah, I want to do that. I'm going to draw the bird cards. I'm going to draw a card from the deck. And I drew a wood duck, which can live in the forest. It needs two seeds and a fruit, has a cavity style nest, is worth four points and can hold four eggs. When activated, I get to draw two cards, and if I do, then I discard one from my hand. So this is a nice way to refill cards from my hand. So that's a good draw for me. It helps me either put it in the woodlands area and increase the strength of my draw cards action, or I could put it up in the forest, uh, which is likely what I'll do, and work toward the round three goal. I also need to keep in mind that we are, for round four, as I'm looking ahead, we're looking for the total number of eggs in the grasslands. So it's gonna be very important for me to be laying eggs, especially because I have a bird that can't hold eggs. Uh, the cowbird does not have eggs on its own nest. Um, and this is one of those neat thematic ties. The bronzed cowbird doesn't have any eggs that it can hold on its card. And the flavor text at the bottom or the fact about the cowbird is that cowbirds lay eggs in other birds' nests and they often break or push out the host bird's eggs. So it makes sense that this bird doesn't hold eggs itself because it lays its eggs in other nests. Which again, once between turns, when someone takes a lay eggs action or when that pink powers activate card comes out, I get to lay an egg in another bird's nest. So the powers are, are a little thematic to um, the way that these work. All right, so I took my turn, I drew a card. The Altoma is gonna take their card they're simply going to gain three eggs, which is three points at the end of the game for my opponent. It's not a good thing for me. He's got a lot of eggs over here. They're also going to lose. Uh, they would lose a cube on the goal card if they had any. They don't. So we're going to go back to my turn. We have the, uh, I've got the wood duck in my hand who needs uh, seed and berries. There are no seed or berries or seed or fruit up here in the bird feeder. So it wouldn't really do me any good to take food at this point. What I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take the draw bird card action. And I'm going to draw another card. And I think what I'm going to do, because I see that there's a bird up here with a grub. There are two birds here that give me grub. Um, and I think what I'm going to I'm going to take the spotted sandpiper here. It's a wetland bird that only takes a grub or, or a, an invertebrate to play. Worth four points, it's a ground nest that can hold two eggs, so not, not awesome. But what's great about this is there'll be another card that I can play because there is an invertebrate in the bird feeder. I can get this down here and now my, my drawing card action will become stronger because I'd have the option in this next space of being able to discard an egg to draw a card. So I'm pretty happy with that. The Altoma for round three. Uh, they are going to take bird from the feeder starting with fish. So fish comes out. It also activates pink power, so I get to lay a bird on an I get to lay an egg on a bird with a bowl nest uh, for my cowbird's pink power ability. So my stellar J is going to get an egg on it. That worked out really well for me. My next action, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take food from the feeder. I'm going to take this invertebrate out of here just so I don't have to uh, worry about it getting taken. Oh, and I forgot to refill 
from the spot up here earlier. So we got Bell's Vireo up there, Grassland or Forest costing two Invertebrates. Now that might not be a bad card to take because I could play it in my Forest, uh, which is actually something I need to do this round. And it costs two Invertebrates. So that's something to think about. Oh, I need to move this back this way. When I move my cube at the end of my turn, uh, here, uh, this one activated power gains a seed from the bird feeder when available. There's no seed in the bird feeders, only rodents, so I don't get that. All right, so it is now. Let's see here. What do I want to do? Uh, oh, it's the Altoma's turn because I just took the I just took the grow the the invertebrate out of there. So the Altoma is going to go. The Altoma is going to take the last rodent out, which is going to be good because when that happens, I'll be able to re-roll when I decide to take food. Um, they're also going to activate pink power, so I get to lay another egg on the Stellar's J. Now, the Stellar's J is at capacity. It can hold two eggs, but that's good because those are eggs that I can spend to play other bird cards because I want to keep eggs in the grassland for the round four scoring objective. I need to find a way to play a bird up there in the uh, woodlands or the forest so I can at least cause a tie uh, and, and you know, kind of cut into some of the points. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the draw birds action again because I don't want to run the risk of this, of this board getting wiped. And I'm going to take the Bell's Vireo, who can be played in either the grasslands or the forest. Cost two invertebrates. When played, I'll get to draw two new bonus cards and keep one. So again, more end game scoring for me. Plus, I could be a bird that could either be played here for the round three, or I could play it in my grasslands for my prairie manager um, end game objective bonus card. So that worked well for me. We'll move that over. My turn is over. We have to refill the. F and we have the scissor tailed flycatcher, which is the bird from the box cover can live only in grasslands, so that's another bird that could be played down here for myself. Um, and uh, eight points, it's a big bird, plus it's a bull nest, so my bronzed cowbird would allow me to, uh, would allow me to um, lay eggs on this bird as well. So this might be a really good bird to have. I really need, I need one more bird that can only live in grasslands. So I had mentioned that I could play this Bell's Vireo down here and help my goal. That wouldn't help my goal at all because it has to only be able to live in the grasslands. Um, all right, so we're gonna take the Altoma's turn. Round three, Altoma's gonna gain two eggs and add a cube to the goal. So now they have a total of three birds in the forest. I only have one, so it's not looking too hot for me right now to be able to take that goal. I'm gonna take the food action. I get to reroll all of the food dice. We're gonna drop these into the bird feeder, see what comes out. I'm hoping for invertebrates, and I got one. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to take this die and take the invertebrate out of here. Take an invertebrate, add it to my supply. This moves over, and it says to gain one seed from the supply if available. So I take this out. There is a seed available, so I get a seed out of there, and that is my turn. So I get a little bit of extra food out of that. Round three. This turn, the Altoma is going to wipe. So there goes my scissor-tailed flycatcher, which makes me sad. I really wanted that card. I should have drawn it uh, for the last turn. They're gonna draw another card face down and add it to their scoring pile. And then we're going to play birds. We have a turkey vulture. We have a black-bellied whistling duck. And we have violet green swallow. None of these birds help with my uh, prairie manager because none of them are exclusive to the grasslands. Uh, the turkey vulture is interesting because the turkey vulture uh, can live anywhere. It doesn't cost any food to play it. And he's got this really cool pink power uh, that when it gets activated, uh, I gain one food from the bird feeder. So this might be a good card for me to have and get played down. Maybe I just play it right here in my wetlands where it doesn't cost me any eggs either. And that makes it, uh, oh, so they wiped out, they also lose their cube off of here. So uh, we, we take the cube off of the uh, goal card. So now we're back to them having two. My opponent has two birds in the forest and I still only have one. So what we're gonna do, um, I am actually going to, I have two actions left and, the, and I'm going to play a bird 
<clears throat> we're gonna play a bird card. I'm gonna discard an egg. We're gonna pay my two invertebrate food that I have in my supply. And we're gonna play Bell's Vireo down here. When played, I get to draw two new bonus cards and keep one. So we'll see what we pull out of here. We have the platform builder, so birds with platform nests. Unfortunately, I only have a wild, one wild nest, so, that, so this would be hard to get at this point. And then we have an oologist. This is a bird. Uh, this is for birds that have at least one egg laid on them. If I have seven to eight birds, it's worth three points. Nine or more birds with an egg on them is worth six points. I think I'm going to take that one, just because the platform builder is going to be tough to get at this point, this late stage of the game. Uh, the oologist could be as well, because I have three birds right now. I need at least seven birds with eggs on them in order to score points. Move this back. That's going to be my turn. The Automa's going to take their turn, and they're going to do the card wipe again. So they're going to wipe these out. So my turkey vulture went away. I was contemplating drawing this card and taking it. I didn't get to. So the turkey vulture is going to go away. There's no second power on there, so we're simply going to refill. We have the Eastern Kingbird, which will be good for my cartographer. We have a House Finch. And we have a Great Egret. So uh, this allows you to play a second bird in your wetlands. You still have to play, pay the regular cost, but... All right, well, that didn't work well for me. I have one action left, and I feel like what I need to do, um, I'm hoping this last card of theirs doesn't give them an action cube because we'll be tied at the very least, so we'll divide up and we'll essentially each get points. Um, each, each get uh, a few, well, he'll get less than six and I'll get more than three, so we'll split those points out. So let's do, I think what I want to do is I actually want to take some food. Um, eh, do I want to do that? No, I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I actually I'm just going to take the lay eggs action because I want some more eggs out here. So I get to lay three eggs. So we're going to put one, two, and three. So that lays that out. I keep it. I keep this open so that I can lay an egg on uh, this bird with my cowbird, which I can't do when it moves. However, this lets me lay an egg on a bird. We're gonna lay an egg on Bell's Vireo. So all of my birds are maxed out with the exception of my Stellar's J. Now I'm really hoping this card that comes out does not give them another action cube, and it does. So they're gonna take any birds that are less than four points. Gonna come off of here. They're gonna keep the three point house finch face up. The two-point Eastern Kingbird is going to go away. They do get an action cube on the round three goal. We have to refill this, the yellow-breasted chat, and the chimney swift get placed out. That is the end of the round. So now we have to look at goals. And unfortunately, they started with a base of two. They ended up with another. So they have three. I only have two birds in the forest, so they're going to get first place. I get second place again. This is not looking so hot. It looks like I'm getting annihilated um, specifically by the, or pretty handily by the Automa. We're going to flip the round card over. Uh, we're going to switch this out. We're going to flip this around so we have the reminder that we're in round four. There's a card in here that says to remove after round three. It's this one. We'll pull that out and pop it back in the box. We reshuffle the Automa deck, pop that there. I now have five actions that I'm able to take. I didn't do a very good engine building in this particular uh, game. I think I focused too hard on the uh, grasslands birds for my end goal. We have a great crested flycatcher. We have a Forster's turn. And we have an Eastern Bluebird. The Eastern Bluebird I absolutely want. Uh, Eastern Bluebird, it has the cartographer, the geography term for Eastern. It also lives only in, only in grassland. So that's the bird I need to play here in order to have four or more birds. That'll be worth eight points at the end of the game. So I definitely want to take that card before it gets wiped. And in fact, for my first action, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the draw cards action. I'm going to add this Eastern Bluebird to my hand. And that will be my turn. So we'll simply refill. And we have a house wren that goes in there. Um, so that will work with the eastern bluebird. Now I just have to hope that I can find uh, an invertebrate and a berry from the food supply up there uh, in order to play it. 
the Altoma is going to take their turn, the round four. For round four, we are going to board wipe. So uh, they're going to wipe the cards out. So it's a good thing I took that, uh, that card that I needed, the Eastern Bluebird there. So they're going to board wipe. They're going to score another four points. And we're going to refill. We have the brown-headed cowbird, which might actually be a good one for me to take because it lives exclusively in the wetlands. It only costs a seed to play, which I already have. So that might be one that I take. We have the Canada goose, and we have an indigo bunting out here. It is my turn, um, and I do think what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw cards again. Just draw one card. I'm going to take this brown-headed cowbird. Uh, it's worth three points. Um, I can't put any eggs on it, which is kind of a bummer uh, because this last round is the number of eggs, and I can only get to a max of six. Um, if we're looking at eggs, they actually start with seven, so it doesn't look like I'm going to win this, this uh, fourth goal unless I can get another bird out here that can hold eggs. So we'll see how that hands. But I want to do this because it only cost me one seed, which I already have, to get this bird out. It's going to cost me two eggs I can take from up here. Um, get this bird played out. That will give me my fourth bird that can only live in grasslands uh, and will give me the eight points at the end of the game. Um, that's about the only thing I'm doing well at this point. Um, so the Altoma's turn. The Altoma flips around here, round four. They're going to, uh, I forgot to refill this, so we're going to refill. It doesn't matter because they're going to take the, the action that wipes everything. So those cards are going to go away. They're drawing another face down card for four points. And they also get to place an action cube, or one of their action cubes on the goal. So now they are sitting at uh, a base of eight, or a total of eight eggs. Again, I can only get to six because I have a bird here that cannot hold eggs. And that's kind of holding me out. So we're going to pop out this. We have the Greater Roadrunner, the American Avocet, and the Common Merganser. All right. Um, I feel like we need to do this. We're going to play a bird card. It's going to cost me two eggs. I'm going to take them off of... Uh, I'll take them both off of Bell's Veer. Actually, yeah, let's take... Well, let's do this. Let's take one off there and one off the Stellar's J. We're going to play the brown-headed cowbird down, paying the seed cost. That will be my turn. Um, now I have two birds. Uh, again, it's a cowbird that doesn't hold eggs. It lays eggs in other nests. So now, uh, if the Altoma activates the pink powers, I'll get to lay an egg on another bird with a bull nest twice. So Stellar's J will get maxed out on eggs automatically if pink powers get activated. Round four. They're going to gain three eggs, opponent gains three eggs, and they're going to lose a cube off of the, uh, the goal card over there. So it's like they spent one of their eggs to play a bird card, for example. It comes back to my turn. I only have two actions left, and I need to be able to uh, get some more birds out. Um, I think what I want to do is... And see the problem that I have. Well, let's do this. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to take two pieces of food out of here. I'm going to take the seed. And I'm going to take the rodent. And put those in my supply. We're going to move. Uh, actually, I'm not going to take the seed out of here. I'm going to take the fish instead. So we'll take the fish and the rodent. This doesn't activate. This lets me gain a seed from the bird feeder if available, which will let me grab that seed. And that will be the end of my turn. Now I have one action left um, where I can play a bird uh, into a spot. If I get the right thing, I only have one bird. So we'll see what happens. It's gonna be interesting. The Altoma for their round four action is gaining three more eggs and they're gaining another action cube on the goal card. So more eggs over here for the Altoma. We got a lot of, and we gain an action cube on the goal card. There's no way I'm going to beat that goal card uh, again because they have uh, way too many eggs. They've got a total of eight to my six, and I am maxed out on eggs. I have one action left, so even if I'm able to play another bird out here, 
uh, that could collect eggs. It's not going to have any eggs on it to start, and I don't have any actions left to be able to place um, eggs out there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to play a bird uh, just because it's just because it's another way. I'm going to place here. It's another way of scoring points. I'm going to put the uh, well. Do I want to do that? Well, I have to do that because it's the only bird I can play. We're going to put the spotted sandpiper down. I'm going to use the fish and the rodent because I can exchange two food for uh, one food. So that becomes the invertebrate that I need. We play the spotted sandpiper down there and initially just give me four points at the end of the game. We move that back. The Altoma takes their final turn of the game. And in round four, they're going to take dice out of the bird feeder. So we would roll roll this. This really doesn't matter because it's the end of the game, but we'll do it anyway just to see it through. And they're going to take starting with Rodent. So Rodent's going to come out of there. Then they activate all pink power. So I do get to place two eggs on the Stellar's J, which is good because each egg that is out is worth a point. So that is the end of the round. Um, we look at the goal cards. I have one, two, three, four, five, six eggs in the grasslands. They have a total of eight. So again, they get first place and I get second place. And now we move on to end game scoring. And I'm going to use, um, try and calculate my own score in my head here. Uh, we have the birds. So total for birds, I have nine, 12, uh, this is going to be 22, 25. I've got 29 points worth of birds that are in here. Um, my bonus cards. My prairie manager, I get eight points for because I have four birds that can only live there. So that puts me, I was at 29 plus eight puts me at 37. The cartographer, birds with geography terms in their names, I don't have any. So this card's not going to score anything, so I'm still sitting at 37 points. And the oologist, I certainly don't have seven birds with eggs on them, so I'm not going to score anything from there. So I only get the eight points. I'm still at 37 points. The end of round goals, I scored zero points there. Two points, which takes me to 39. Another three to get me to 42 points. And then another four gets me to 46. So I'm at 46 points so far. Eggs, uh, 47, 48, 49, 50, 52, 54, that's 55 points. And I don't have any food on the cards or any cards tucked under. Some cards let you tuck cards under that are worth points. So I'm going to finish the game with 56 points. Now, we have to see how the Automa does with its end of game scoring. First of all, they're going to gain points for every egg that they have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The end of round goals, they get 0 points there. They scored 5, so that's going to take them to 20. Plus 6, so they're at 26. Plus another 7 puts them at 33. Then they're going to score points for their birds. All the face-up birds are worth the face value. Face-down birds are worth 4 points each. So I, they have 36 uh, well, let's see, 20, 26, they're at 33 points. I'm at 56, so they're at 33. We have, uh, let's do 33, that's 38, 41, 44. These are worth four points each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times four is another 28 points in face down cards. So we're looking, let's see, what do we got here? We got 28. That is 30. So there's 39 points total. They're going to add 39 to the 33 that they have from up here. I got stomped. We're looking at 72 points, if the math is correct. 72 to 56. And that is Wingspan. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, keep gaming, friends.